questions that we have to answer, probably to control what's being posted. And we're live. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Higher Circuit. Um, we are here with the incredible ladies. Thank you so much for tuning in. I already see you guys trickling into the live. Today, we have a very special and very important topic that we are so excited to share with you, and it is um, definitely coming in by high demand and a lot of questions that were made around this topic. And we really wanted to address some of these really important topics about um, mediumship, about communication with the other side. And so today we're going to be talking about a, a little deeper into these topics. We're going to be talking about different kinds of mediumships, how we can communicate with the other side. We're going to talk about the mechanics of communicating and connecting to these other dimensional planes and the beings and entities that reside in that space. And we're going to be looking at ancestral healing through medium contact and also in your own meditation contact, how we can tune in to become our own mediums and connect with our ancestor lineages that are here to be healed through our generational trauma and experiences. We're also going to be, going to be looking at how to clear house energy, the home energy. Is it stagnant? Do you have ghosts? Do you have entities? Do you have a lot of heavy energy in your home? Do you never feel replenished when you're at home? So we'll take a look at how we can work with the energy in the home and neutralize some of that. We're also going to be looking at communications with the other side in terms of the different ways that we can do that. We have some incredible experts here today. We're going to look at speaking with souls and spirits before coming into this life and speaking with souls and spirits that are departing this physical life. We have an incredible prenatal medium with Jill Stein, who will be talking about uh, prenatal mediumship and how communication can be made when we are in the gestation process of our beautiful children as they come in. So she's going to be talking about that. And all of us here today, I want to allow everybody to introduce themselves. Tammy will be specializing in the house clearings. Um, Rachel will be talking about the angelic connection into the angelic realms. And Joan will be assisting us with a deeper understanding of mediumship and also um, pendulum work, how to use that uh, dowsing when we're communicating with uh, these other entities. Um, and we're also, uh, I'll be touching on the topic of that infamous white light and what happens when we start going into this other dimensional plane as we depart near death experience. And what does it look like? What is necessary to have a good death, a death that is in the highest order and that will take you to the next level of your evolution. So we have a lot to talk about today. I want to thank you guys for joining us and it is a pleasure to be here. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Jill to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. So excited that you're here and that you're watching afterwards. We're going to have so much amazing content for you today. And I'm Jill, like Geraldine said, I am a prenatal medium and a dragon master. And I just love connecting people with the incoming souls of their children, the children that they're maybe adopting. And even before, even before conception occurs and, you know, the connection here on this physical plane is made, we can be reaching out and making that amazing connection. So super excited to talk more about that today. And I'm going to hand it over to Joan to hear more about the pendulum. Oh, <laughs> I'm, hello, everyone. I'm so glad everyone's here. Uh, it's been an interesting week because I was focusing on that, on that topic. And so when you focus on something, of course, you have more experiences. I use um, the pendulum and the intuitive coaching systems that I've created to communicate uh, with myself, my higher self, and also spirits on the other side. And what I love about the pendulum is it gives you um, answers that you can see right there, right then. And you have a more of a validation of what you're um, doing. So at any rate, I'm excited. I've um, been doing this work for about 20 years. And I'm a psychic, a clairvoyant, and I found out a medium. So very exciting week <laughs> and just really glad to be here. And Rachel, why don't you introduce yourself? 
Thank you so much, Joan. Hello, everyone. I am Rachel Cooley. I am an angel therapy practitioner and mentor, as well as an angel certification trainer. So as you can see from my titles and from Geraldine's introduction from me earlier, I work with the angelic realm, and I in particular help intuitives, healers, and light workers to tap into their angelic guidance to bring those blessings to others. So I'm super happy to be here with all of you wonderful women today and sharing about this very important topic of connecting in between the connections with mediumship to our loved ones. So I'm gonna pass it on now to Tammy. Hello, thank you, Rachel. Hello, everybody. And yes, thank you so much for joining us today. This is a really interesting uh, topic, topics, because we got quite a few of them. Uh, I work as an intuitive advisor to your questions. You can find me at tammysintuitive.com, also on higher healing. I am a medium as well. A lot of times in my sessions that I, I work with, people will ask about their loved ones. I work more as a psychic medium. So I'd like to know who I'm connecting with and who it is that somebody wants to connect with. And um, as Joan was kind of saying that she found out she was a medium, you know, really when you're clear audience, you're a medium, you know, <laughs> because you do, you, you're able to hear spirit and connect. So that would mean people's, you know, your loved ones that are in spirit, animals and so forth. So Thank you for joining us. We're, we're very excited that you're all here. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for that amazing introduction. And so um, let's get started. I'd love to begin by talking first about, as, she would, as Tammy was just describing, the different kinds of mediumship. So Tammy, you talked about uh, Claire audience, are there other ways that we can connect with the, with, um, the deceased, the past, these spirits that are on the other side? Well, you know, I think um, there are different ways they come to us. Certainly, a uh, clear audience is, you know, it's a leg up, right? It's a benefit because you're able to tune in and hear information from, from spirit and so forth. Everybody has abilities. We all have them. Everybody watching this knows that. Uh, some of you are probably very clear audience and aware of it. So just, you know, practice a little bit more at it. So as far as as far as me connecting, that I pri my primary is the clear audience. I, I'm clairvoyant as well. I'll see images. I don't often see spirit, just like seeing them. I have had that experience though. Generally it's in my mind's eye. They'll wave in front of me sometimes or just kind of appear that way. Uh, so I would say clear audience and of course, you know, dream state on the astral is another way that we connect with our loved ones as well. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of mediumship and what happens when we're connecting. Um, as we are these very much uh, multidimensional beings, there are levels of our uh, vibrational frequency that we can tune in like a radio station where when we turn the dial, we can hear more or become aware of different aspects of ourselves that are reflected in our environment. And one of those ways of communicating with this non-physical aspect of our reality is by changing our frequency either to a higher vibration or a lower vibration. Now, wherever you move your vibrational uh, dial, let's say, will define the kind of experiences and the kind of uh, beings that you will be interacting with. And this is true for any dimensional plane or manifestation of another dimensional aspect. So when we're talking about connecting with those that have passed, that have crossed over to the other side, we're talking about these uh, disembodied souls that are, in a sense, trapped or still connecting to the physical material plane. And a lot of times these ties and these connections are done um, due to uh, uh, unwillingness, uh, usually within a fear or confusion of what what it is that they're in, the state that they're in, which is no longer physical. And so there is a, an attachment, either an emotional attachment or an attachment to the material, the physical aspect, for example, a home or a certain object or certain people. Um, there is a very, very profound attachment, which they don't want to let go and move on to another dimensional plane. Now we question a lot of times, you know, what are these entities? Um, you know, when we communicate with them, oftentimes we can see them. We can see them in homes. Um, we can see that they are attached to very much to the property and to this environment that was known as a home for them. And it's what they know as familiar. It's their safe place for them. So what happens is that 
when uh, and, and the ancients in history have really researched and revered death as the crossover into the other next dimensional plane. So what that means and what, what I make out of all of these, um, you know, the research of, of entering into another dimensional plane or detachment of the physical, whether that's going into lucid dreaming, astral projection and death. Last time in our group, we talked about astral projection and we talked about Clearly, scientifically proven, there is a connection that when we are going through the astral projection, the next step over is death. And it's because of this vortex that is created within the body of detachment that it begins to create a different vibrational frequency from the crystalline physical body. It begins to move into another phase of manifestation, which is energetic, it's vibrational, that now manifests into this other dimensional level of, 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 of not matter, but the non-physical. So this is where we begin to move out from the seventh dimensional uh, planes of the body, the seven chakras into the eighth, ninth, and 10th up into uh, up until these main nine dimensional planes is actually what's in this earth. The earth is made up of the ninth dimensional planes. The matrix that we partake in is made out of these nine dimensional planes. And it's where we begin to tap in to this astral plane and we begin to interconnect with the disembodied entities that belong and are still attached to the physical plane and still very much interacting. Um, and what interaction means is that there is an exchange. Um, there is a life source that is being provided through the material physical plane, which means that they feed off of either somebody's energy in the physical, or they feed off the interaction that is being created through an environment, a home, for example, that is haunted. They are very much attached. So there is an exchange there, a codependency to that dimensional plane. So a lot of times when we're talking about mediumship, and for example, uh, with Tammy, who does these house clearings, um, we want to connect with this entity, the being that is there, and guide them gently out of the space, showing them, of course, this incredible light. And we talk about the light at the end of the tunnel when people are having near-death experiences. Um, we hear story after story that people see the light and they go towards the light. They want to, they feel drawn to this light. And the light is actually what is created through this top uh, chakra in the, the crown of the head that creates this portal opening into this other dimension. Each dimension has a portal entryway. And depending on the vibrational frequency, you're either a match to that or you're not. So I will be talking a little later on about what it means to have the perfect death in, in that case, in order to have the perfect vibrational frequency to gently and in a more loving and healthy and um, positive, successful death where you we cross over into those dimensional planes in a beneficial way. But our communication, as we are merging with these dimensional planes, can be done through the physical senses. Because these beings are still attached to the material plane, they can govern and still interact with those laws of communication and vibrational expression. So they can move things, they can make sounds, they can, you know, oftentimes change uh, because of their uh, uh, vibrational uh, magnetic field, create different variations of temperature in a room when you're walking around. And you really feel that sometimes when you're walking in a, in a house that is haunted, oftentimes you walk in through cold and warm areas of the house where you begin to have uh, goosebumps sometimes. You really pick up on that vibrational shift as well as a ringing in the ears or pressure changes in a house. Um, so the communication that is done is done through the physical senses, but those that are tapping into their extrasensory abilities, which is their psychic abilities, then begin to communicate on that non-physical level. And the mediumship uh, can be created through the sound, through hearing a voice, that is coming through meditation or through a state of awareness, or it can be done through um, feel even. Uh, I know that sometimes in our sessions for DNA reprogramming, ancestors that are trying to heal the exact lineage that's being represented in that session will appear to provide either support or communication 
in order to release from those healing um, cords. And we're going to talk about that ancestral healing in a second as well. Um, so what I'd love to uh, get into is um, I'd like to begin with Tammy discussing home clearings, Tammy. Sure. How do yeah. we do home clearings and how can we do them for ourselves or how can you help us? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, home clearings, you, you can clear your own home of energy. You know, there might be a difference of just doesn't feel that good or I want it to, you know, feel a little bit better. I'm going to be selling my home or, you know, buying a home. And by the way, I always recommend that if you are selling your home, I, I think you should have a house clearing. And as well as when you have just bought one and you're going to be moving into a place, it's a really great idea. And I really, you know, I, I put a plug for myself out to the real estate agents out there too, that I work with some right now uh, doing that because it's something great to put on the listing for those who, you know, care about that kind of thing, but it, it can make a difference. So you can clear your own home, but I'll tell you the difference of what I do and what I offer. But, you know, if you're to go into your own home and clear it, certainly you can burn some sage. Uh, the main the main gist of it is you you want to you know set an intention a blessing at the same time um, protect yourself as well uh, energetically before you're you're doing this have a window a little bit open if you're doing a smoking kind of sage if you're burning some like white sage or something uh, you, there are sage sprays that you can use as well if you'd rather not burn that uh, and have the smoke in, in the home. But yeah, have a, a window open a little bit. The, the idea of that is if you're certainly if you're burning sage, especially well, any, I guess, sage sprays would would be the same as well, is that anything that might be negative in there as far as a negative energy will cling to the smoke. That's why we like a window open a little bit. So it has a place to, to go on out. So if you're doing it by yourself, you know, you can you can go into the room, go into the, the corners of the room as well throughout the house. There's different ways to do it. I don't I think it's more really about your intention. You can ask your guides and angels to be with you again for protection and just to help you with it. And then I like to, um, you know, well, I suggest that you do a blessing, like I said, in, in the home as well. So certainly anytime it feels a little stuck, energy can just be stuck at a home. It doesn't mean necessarily there's anything hanging around. There is sometimes, but it doesn't always mean that. So now for what I do, what I offer uh, in conjunction with that whole idea, the whole process is the same, but is I will go into a home, I go into each room, I get a feel for the energy, I open up to my guides to give me any information they need to give me about the room itself. Now, sometimes they'll say, oh, everything's okay in here, move on to the next one, you know, so we'll go to the next one. And I just, I, I have my, uh, the homeowner with me just so they can hear, you know, what I'm getting. Uh, at the end of that, then, you know, if there's nothing there, so to speak, as far as spirit or ghost or something like that, then I just do the same thing. You know, I clear it out. I do a blessing in the home. It's good to go. I always feel the difference afterwards too, by the way. I really, it does make a difference. If there's a spirit activity and they've been concerned about that, I always go in with a compassionate approach. And that is, again, I'm protected. I will often ask my guides, uh, you know, if it's safe for me to be there. I have been told before, no, you don't want to go to that one. They, they, they didn't want me to go to a house. Uh, and I trust that. So right now I should make a point of saying I'm, not, I'm on pause with in home, but you can do virtual remote house energy clearings. It's no different than if I'm on the phone with a client, I don't have them in front of me, I can still get the information. So I can still work on that. Our guides love, guides and angels love to go to homes and <laughs> cleanse them. They've given me really great visuals of them doing that. Uh, so, you know, it can, it, can be it can happen that way. So if there is a spirit in the home, getting back to that subject, I do try to find out what their intention is of being there. Some of them, as Geraldine was saying, they're, they're very attached to the area. A lot of what I get is fear of moving on. They don't know what's on the other side. Usually it could boil down to the fact that they didn't really have any kind of faith, maybe of, you know, that there's maybe a life after death. So there's a bit of a fear, you know, it's a little bit more comfortable to hang out on the earth plane around people they know and can understand that. Uh, so we, we try to explain to them, I say we, it's coming for me, but my guides will help with that, you know, explaining to them what they can, what they can look forward to on the other side uh, through that white light. And they always see it. I always tell them, well, do you, do you see 
do you see that beautiful white bright light? And they always say, yeah, we see it, or I see it. Sometimes it's couples together, I'm more than one together that's just not wanting to move across. And so then I just go into the, the process of just telling them how wonderful it's gonna be, that they're actually gonna be way more validated and loved there than they are hanging around in a home hoping somebody notices them. Right. You know, because they want the validation. Sometimes they want to be validated that they didn't die. So I'll tell them, I know you didn't die. You know, you're not dead. I, I get it. Uh, and so I will try to, you know, gently persuade them to, to make that, that journey. A lot of times they do. A lot of times it's as simple as having somebody, they once told me, my guides told me later that the fact that I'm a medium, I'm on the earth plane, is a lot more believable to them than let's say the beautiful angel that's beckoning them mm. only because they didn't really believe in that maybe. Mm -hmm. And then here's somebody on the earth that, that can hear them, gets them, understands and validates them. So they're a little bit more trusting, oddly, of that situation to go ahead and make that crossing. There are some that just are not ready. I've definitely had some, that's why I tell my clients, if I'm gonna go to a ghost kind of thing, I'm gonna do the best I can, but I cannot guarantee you that they are gonna transition because it's all free will and all that stuff. So, you know, some will just say, well, I'll think about it. They'll tell me that, I'll think about it. And then my guides will tell me later that they did make the transition. But some have just said, I'll think about it. Yeah, I kind of like it here. I don't know, just not, don't think I'm ready. Some have attitudes, just like, you know, people do. Uh, others are very loving and, and, you know, just so grateful. I've heard the many once they transition, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, it's really sweet. And it, it makes me very emotional because it's a really great feeling. Uh, so that's kind of the process as far as when I go in and, uh, and do that and work on that. Sometimes I will still work with that spirit. That's a little stuck. I have many stories. I mean, you're not here to all those, hear all those stories right now, but I have many stories of interesting situations of ghosts and, and, and the like. But uh, sometimes I'll show them the escalator to heaven. Uh, it could be a ladder, but we like this. I like the escalator. It's a little easier for them to get on and imagine that they're going up. Some will show me suitcases are ready to leave the house, uh, that kind of thing. And also like Geraldine touched on, sometimes it's about the vibration in a home that they're interested in. I once was in a, a home that they had real loud walking. I mean, it was real obvious stuff going on. I never heard that it, was, it would happen at night, but when I came in to, to check on it. And so what I found out is, to me, it was very interesting because I had never heard this before, but there was two of them that liked to hang around because they liked the, I'm gonna say the acoustics in the home. <laughs> so they were like, they were like experimenting. I don't even know exactly what it was, but experimenting with sound or something like that. They were very separate in their dimension from the people living there. They had no intention of haunting them or scaring them. They were just annoying to the, to the homeowners for obvious reasons. It's keeping them up. So that's what it was about for them. So I was encouraging them to go, like if they really didn't, weren't ready to go <laughs> to the light and maybe try it there, which I was encouraging that. But you know, you, you could go to some place like the big mall or something, you know? I'm just saying where there's where people aren't gonna be so affected by the real personal one-on-one -on -one with this. Um, and I'm trying to remember at that time, it took them a while, I think, to release that, that they I think they finally did. But that's just one example of that kind of thing. So as far as for me, that's what I offer. Uh, but again, yes, all of us are able to go in and clear a room. It's typical for rooms that don't have a window and things to have stuck energy. I'll go into bathrooms a lot. You know, ooh, feels a little stuck. It, it's nothing concerning. We always get like, they, our guides are always like showing me plants. Put a plant in there, even if it's a fake plant, by the way. It represents life. Doesn't matter. It's what it represents. Oh, a real one's great. But if you can't do that, Stick one in a bathroom, you know, in the corner, that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes they will show me, they kind of get into feng shui, feng shui, however it is pronounced. I've never, um, you know, learned or trained in that. But boy, they sure like will give me things like that. Oh, they're on the wall, you know, it'd be great because it's all about energy, you know. So sometimes I get some of that too. And I kind of let my clients know that ahead of time that they may be hearing <laughs> some suggestions uh, of what to do as well. So I'm hoping I'm covering some things, Geraldine. If there's any questions you have that you want me to touch on, I'm happy to do that. 
Absolutely. That's amazing. One of the things that you mentioned that really uh, stands out to me is the top is um, you mentioned that it's not always ghosts or beings or, or souls. It's um, it's the energy that becomes stagnant in the home. Yes. And I think that we see that a lot, especially when we're tapping in with our clients. If virtually, you can really tap into the energy of a home, even through the virtual um, session. And so um, I work with energy in those cases. How do you work with that? Um, what do you do in those cases when it's energy? And how, how do you work with that differently as opposed to when working with a, a medium, uh, having to tap into a spirit? So yeah. Bad. Okay. So that's a good question. So really with the energy, it's saging, I find, you know, works. So once I've saged it, I always like to go back and just, you know, stand there, get a, a feel for the room again. And it just needed to be jostled around and, you know, kind of dissipated. And that's usually what I put as an intention to, to dissipate any negative energy, at least to dissipate into the light. Um, and again, we like some windows, but it can still be saged that way. So yeah, so for stuck energy, basically I'm saging it and just setting an intention, you know, versus when I'm speaking with spirit, um, always with love, always with love that I try to, and I've had, I've been around some that have been on a, I don't want to say real low level, but they're, you know, they're a little bit, um, they just like to menacing, a little bit menacing. And they, again, it's a way to get attention. Uh, I wrap them in love as well. I also stand in my power when I'm there. And as I've mentioned before, I unfurl my wings <laughs> and I make them really big and strong uh, and to let them know I'm represented, you know, mm -hmm. and, or I'm a representation of, of source and all that is good and, and light. Uh, so sometimes that's enough for them as well to start to retreat or find that, you know, they, they have other options than staying around a house. Uh, another thing too, I would touch on really quickly is sometimes we should always pay attention to what's going on in the house. If there's a lot of chaotic energy, if there's a lot of anger, if there's a lot of frustration, fighting, whatever it might be, that can create an energy that can, that can emulate. I don't know if that's the word I want to use. Um, you know, like a, a, a ghost that's not nice, in other words, right? It can, it's just, it could be accumulation of energy that's bouncing off and working off what's happening in the family. So sometimes it can be about that. And it's something to think about. If you're ever having experiences in your home, first take a check on where you're all out at in your, in yourselves, in, in the family dynamic or whoever's living there. Absolutely. Everything is energy. Everything is vibrational frequency. So when we come in as healers to a home, we are often, we spend a lot of time cultivating our life force energy. We cultivate this um, uh, structure of light that is our multidimensionality. And most of, most of you that are here in the chat are intuitive and are also working in those lines of energy and healing. And so when we are alchemists of our life force energy, we bring it up to a very high vibration, which creates an expansive expression. And so again, you are mimicking that source light that we would see at death, that white light at the end of the tunnel, we are mimicking that life force. And so a lot of these entities tend to come and are attracted to the white light because, um, you know, they want to interact with that there. It's a source. It's a life source like food. Um, it provides life force for them. And another thing that I found very interesting about what you'd say is regarding the acoustics of a home. And this really plays into the next topic um, where we talk about uh, detachment from the body and what happens in in order to create perfect acoustics in a space, there has to be, uh, you know, walls and structure of the building has to be somehow calculating in a certain way that creates bouncing of vibrational frequency and sounds that is pleasing and creates harmony. It creates like harmonic resonance in that energetic space. And a lot of temples, a lot of churches are built uh, very uh, respecting these laws, these uh, kind of um, mechanical laws of creation, which are structured by using numerology, using um, uh, geometry, sacred geometry, and creating perfect shapes that create resonance with sounds and vibrationals that bounce off to create perfect environments. And just like churches have that vibrational frequency, 
it is a mirror of the vibrational creation that we can create in the physical body. The physical body is, is a temple as well. And so at death, when we create the perfect uh, structure, geometric, energetic, electrical structure within the body, leaving and detaching from the physical also becomes pleasant, also becomes in alignment going into that next dimensional plane. It is all about vibrational frequency. So in the home, if you have a lot of this stagnant negative vibration that is being stuck, transfers into the material things that are around you. That's why I suggest decluttering your house and having complete as much minimalist uh, home as you can. Try not to have a lot of cluttery things because those things absorb life force energy. They, uh, it's stagnant energy that won't move. And it creates too many walls in which you cannot move. It also has to do with the structure of the house. Our square structures of the houses cut off our energetic fields. They cut off our energetic expression. And when there is a lot of metal in the structures of the house, it creates a box that doesn't allow that perfect expression of this vibrational frequency. And this also traps energy, especially corners. When we do house clearings, I work with white light and vortices in the home that absorb from the corners of every single, every single corner in the home is a place for trapped energy that can be removed, that can be cleared into these vortices in the house. So it's very important to move. The idea is to transmute dark stagnant energy into light again everything is that transmutation and alchemy of energy um, and we are also creating that alchemy through death we are moving from the physical we're changing the status of, of matter into another status and so from matter we are going into energy um, very good so let's talk about the next topic um, that we're going to go into um uh, let's see, from home, let's talk about, um, now let's go back to the very beginning. Let's go back to prenatal. So I'd love to hand it over to Jill and uh, talk to, a little bit to, of us, um, to us about um, how you communicate, bringing in souls. Yeah, and I, I'm tying that in. I just want to, there's a couple things I'm getting that I really need to mention because of what Tammy said and what you said, Geraldine, just about the people that are listening to us, they're intuitive, they're very empathic. And that white light that we have within us, it's a, it's a responsibility. And Tammy was talking about souls that, you know, need, they might need that little extra push to feel comfortable with getting to the next place they're supposed to be. And because you have that ability to, to be that light, and they might trust you more, like Tammy was set, saying, I just encourage everybody to, when you feel different, when you feel heaviness anywhere you are, and you, that might be some of that attraction happening. And if you can do a little bit of work around that and just tell any energy that you might be feeling that it is okay to go to the light and it, it is going to be wonderful and they are going to be more validated once, once they go, you're helping us all do our work, all, all what we're meant to do. I, I had, I drove through Montecito after in California, we had some terrible, terrible mudslides. We lost about, I think about 23 people in the mudslides. And when I drove through afterwards, there were so many souls attached to me, but it wasn't the people that had just died. It was people that had been, that had been living, not living, but being in these very hundreds and hundreds of year old houses. And now the houses were just gone yeah. from this mudslide. And as I came through the area, they, they just came and they were attracted to whatever light it was that I was, I was putting out there. And it was until I figured out what was going on, it was devastating. I was just lying on my mother's bed. I could barely move. And then when I figured out, okay, I know what's going on here. I was able to talk to them about what was going on for them and release them from being attached to me. So I just encourage everybody to embrace this kind of, it's not work, it's, it's service. Embrace this kind of service. And I do, I, I know we're going to have Joan and we're going to have Rachel speak too. I'm not going to speak too long into the prenatal mediumship, but I love tailing off of the home thing. Because when, when you're thinking about inviting a baby into your home or 
opening yourself up for adoption or getting pregnant or somebody is pregnant that's in your family, doing that energy work around the home is just going to help with that very, they need to be comfortable when they leave and they need to feel comfortable when they're coming in. So doing all of this work around making the home clear and clean and at a, at a wonderful vibration, that's going to help those spirits that are coming in. I don't even know what word to use, but the, the, the entities that are coming in to, to become that child, that's just going to help them visit more and feel good and, and want to be around the family. And it's just so wonderful to start to open up that communication and that welcome mat long before we ever really think we're doing it. We're doing it. It's so much more than decorating the nursery and having a baby shower. It's, it's all, all day long and you can do it yourselves. I love working with families to bring in those messages that they're getting and helping with, you know, if it's somebody that's, that's not quite conceived or looking to adopt, helping them reach out and establish that line of communication and opening that welcome to somebody maybe deciding to be a part of that family or once they're pregnant or know that they're adopting and know, know where that baby is coming from, opening up that bond earlier on so that when the baby arrives, which can be such a traumatic thing. I mean, why do you think they cry their butts off as soon as they get here? It's like, holy crap, what have I done? I'm here. And there's confusion, just like when we die, there's confusion when we're coming in. And if we can open up that wonderful communication ahead of time, there's a recognition that happens more quickly and more comforting. And oh yeah, I remember we've already been talking. We've already been laying down a foundation for these amazing relationships that we're going to have. And then also, I think my biggest thing that I'd love to share with people is that wisdom that comes from children, the babies, when they're here, there's so many other ways of communicating other than speech. So when you look into a baby's eyes or you're talking to little children, just as they start talking, the memory of where they came from can be so strong. And we can learn such amazing things about the world that we don't, that we don't remember really now that we're adults. So I just, I encourage, I, I love working in that prenatal, prenatal realm and, and just opening up that channel. But I love also that we've tied it in to the home because how important is a home and the environment being for welcoming a new member into the family? Yeah. Wow, that is so perfect. I really, really love that you talk about, you know, you need to feel comfortable leaving and you need to feel comfortable coming in because it really speaks to the fact that we are energetic beings. And so our environment, how we feel things is through, through the sensory body and that's vibration, right? This either whether it's sound, whether it's touch, whether it's feelings and emotions, that is all vibrational communication. So I really love that you talk about that. And, and then it goes into the next topic of hybrids as well, uh, or star seeds, or these incredible rainbow children, or indigo children, or crystal children that are coming into the earth at these different ranges of times, phases of this earth evolution, in which we're coming in with new wisdom, new information. So some of these children, Jill, I'm pretty sure, you know, they connect, they communicate with you, and they let you know what they're here to do. They probably know their mission. Um, and children, we were just on a discussion yesterday talking about how children, a lot of children are coming in remembering their past lives. I know I remembered my past life. I don't know if any of these other ladies here, as a child, I, I, there, there was even a moment where you remember being a man or being, you know, another uh, kind of a, a being. And you emerging, you're merging those timelines in order to experience something. So it's very important to be aware of that for our healing and our evolution and progression from beginning to end. So and, thank you. Mm -hmm. And one quick thing about what you're saying about the, the different types of children coming into the world. It, we're all vibrating on a different frequency. And when we're vibrating on a certain frequency, sometimes we can see things that other people can't see there's a lot of people that see aliens and a lot of children that can and adults don't believe them. But the difference between who, who can see what's going on and who can't has so much to do with that vibration. So 
kids seem to have a vivid imagination, but it's not always imagination. It's the vibration, vibration that they're on and they can see things that we can't. So embracing that and just listening to the stories mm, and not absolutely. just putting them off as, as fantasy friends, but understanding that when a child tells a story of something they're seeing, you're actually learning. You're learning about the universe and to embrace that in children is such a blessing, especially like Geraldine was saying with the kids that are coming into the world these days and what's happening on this planet and the ascension, it's the children are just such a wonderful way to learn. I love learn from, that. Learn from the kids. <laughs> so important. Yeah. And, and you know, that's really good that you brought that up because children there, sometimes they have invisible friends and it can either be a ghost, you know, a disembodied soul um, it could, it could be someone's, I, I've had clients that have seen their grandparents at their crib that came every day talking to them and it was traumatizing to them at the time. But then when they revisit and realize that it, it's an old soul an ancestor that came in to connect, maybe give them information, these kids are able to really understand that they have been, they had these abilities all their life. You know, it's not something that um, it's maybe these experiences. And it's also as a parent to teach them about these intuitive gifts that are available to us, because as children, maybe they get scared and they don't know how to handle that situation as well. So helping them become comfortable with that in uh, uh, communicating with the other side, whether it's deceased or some other entity of another dimension. Amazing. Um, I'd love to talk about uh, entities and um, talk a little bit about uh, now that we're going into the darker information about our other potential manifestations of this information, how we can discern what we're connecting with. So I'm going to hand it over to, jo uh, to Joan uh, to talk to us a little bit about dowsing and how she can utilize dowsing for mediumship clearing homes or communicating with these uh, deceased souls. Well, thank you so much. The, this has been such a great talk with um, everyone and all their information from Tammy and Jill. And, um, and then Rachel, of course, uh, holds the angelic spirits with us. <laughs> uh, you know, I, when I started dowsing, I had worked with Tarot on and off for about 10 years. And then I learned how to douse with a pendulum. And then I uh, created communication systems, which include charts. And so as I started clearing myself with my pendulum, which is really, you know, it's a really easy um, thing to do with your pendulum. I started, I think my vibration just started naturally going up. And then I started having uh, these spiritual experiences uh, when I gave readings to clients where I saw angels and deceased loved ones. Uh, and I didn't really know that's what mediumship was called <laughs> until this week I read this book um, called Medium. And what I loved about this book, it's by a gal, um, Constanza Morningstar. What I loved about this was that she kind of uh, utilizes embracing the, the angelic realm. She talks about the laws of attraction, the laws of love, so that if you're a loving person who meditates and uh, ha does psychic um, play, <laughs> then your vibration will naturally be higher. And the entities that uh, who and spirit guides that come in will be at a higher vibration. So I really have been in 20 years of doing this work of dowsing, being a clairvoyant, uh, clairaudient, I really um, have not run into a lot of um, dark energy. Uh, the only, the, the dark energy that I've run into is when I've been overtired or I doused too long. And one time I went to this halfway house in Santa Cruz to visit a girlfriend, well, bless her heart, who ended up there. And, you know, I came kind of not, I didn't protect myself before I went. I didn't call on the angels before I went. I just went to see her because I was worried about her. 
And when I, by the time I got home, it was only like 15 minute ride, drive from my place to, from that halfway home, house to home. And, but I realized I had entities, you know, I realized I had picked up something. So I came home, I just, you know, I have this really simple uh, signal for clearing. So I call on the angels, Archangel Michael, come, please come help me, come help me. And uh, then I use my signal for clearing. Um, I, you know, cleared my, my bedroom, my whole house. Uh, I like candles, you know, just as a symbol of, of, um, of the light being with us. And then I also, you know, I have special crystals. I have, I keep my bowl of crystals here, but I, you know, I just even picking up, you know, a comforting crystal when you're scared, you know, can really help, you know, and holding it, uh, saying your prayers, clearing yourself, <laughs> but something always happens to me. I get really exhausted when I have that dark energy and I, um, so I just go in my bedroom. I have a, you know, it's kind of a, I have a, a cross that I painted in my bedroom. And um, I have an angel in my bedroom also, a painting of an angel. And um, so I go in my bedroom and I take a nap after I kind of do the spiritual work, which doesn't have to take long. I mean, it can just be five, 10, 15 minutes. And then I take a nap and I wake up and I'm fine, you know? And that's only, I think in all these years, that's only happened three or four times. Uh, but when it happens, you know it. <laughs> and then the other thing I would just mention, other times um, when I was first beginning this work, um, I would call my teacher uh, who was more of an adept and she would clear me and I could feel it. I could feel it instantly, you know? So we have all these tools. The thing that I do want to say though, um, is that what I, mediumship doesn't have to be uh, scary to us. If we're doing our meditating, we're calling on the angels, uh, we're protecting ourselves, we're staying at a high vibration, then we can actually talk to loved ones. Um, sometimes I've done that through automatic handwriting, or um, it was really sweet this week. I, this it was so amazing. I decided to um, visit my mother <laughs> who's on the other side. And um, she took me to her art studio on the other side and showed me around and showed me what she was doing. And I was like, oh, mom, I'm, I'm just so thrilled for you, you know, and, um, and then um, I was curious about my dad, you know, I just, my dad um, built beautiful custom homes in the Bay Area in um, El Cerrito and other places. And uh, they were just gorgeous. They were just gorgeous. In fact, I've never lived in such gorgeous homes since I left home. <laughs> Shout out to my father. But I, um, he was in architectural school and I just, I mean, afterwards I just cried, you know, because I, I really did feel like I had this wonderful time with my mom and my dad. And uh, so anyway, and then I love doing this for other, um, for clients. You know, I have one client uh, whose father, you know, had, um, he had a, a like a five year journey of fighting cancer. And she, you know, so my, my girlfriend, she's just darling and she's client has become a girlfriend. And so her father always arrives when I see him, he always comes in a, in a red Corvette. <laughs> and then sometimes the Corvette is blue, you know? And so I, you know, I, the first time with his client, I mentioned, I said, Oh, he's just arrived in a red Corvette. Is it she said, that's my dad. That's my dad. But his car, the car, the color of the car on earth was blue, you know? So sometimes he comes in red, sometimes in blue, but he has a really, I don't know. He just has a really cheerful spirit. So when I uh, do readings for clients, sometimes I just get to meet 
these amazing people on the other side, you know, and I get to meet people's relatives on the other side. And I, it just totally, it really blows me away sometimes. And then I have a, a client who um, was from India and his father passed away recently. And he had even gone home during the pandemic to see the father, um, which I advised him again against doing that, but he did it. And uh, anyway, he came home. I mean, he his father passed when he was there. So the father came and came, the spirit of the father actually came home <laughs> with this with this man. And I so anyway, I did some prayers and um clearings and healings uh, around, you know, my uh, client was, of course, so sad about the father passing, but the father was just this amazing man, you know, I mean, it's just like, and tapping into the people on the other side, you know, instead of being scary, maybe it, it is like, I just get amazed at spiritually, um, how deep people's love can be, how profound their concern and sharing, you know, for their family um, about and about adventures and how, uh, you know, I can just feel all of that. So I kind of, I love the work because I get to meet all these kind of interesting people, you know, and it makes me feel, um, it makes me really feel connected. Like we might not always understand our purpose or, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, we might not always, uh, you know, because earth stuff gets in the way and everything, but then I meet these people and I'm like, oh, th that's why I do this work, <laughs> you know, and to comfort loved ones and then to also help loved ones um, open a channel to their, to their own um, and to encourage them to contact their parents or their children who have passed and to look for signs and all of that. So anyway, I didn't even know I was a medium <laughs> before this, this week. So I'm learning so much from this group of awesome psychics. So thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you all for being here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joan. And uh, to segue on that, let's take a look at uh, Rachel and her work with angelic beings, um, since Joan was talking about that as well. Rachel. Yes. Thank you, Geraldine. Thank you, Joan, for all you just shared. So powerful and what amazing stories as well. Um, I wanted to start out by sharing um, with around mediumship and the angels. I will go, as Joan mentioned earlier, Archangel Michael. He is an archangel that I work with quite a bit. And he's also an amazing archangel for clearing energy. Mm -hmm. He also can help connect us with our loved ones on the other side, along with Archangel Azrael. Archangel Azrael is an incredible archangel. He's like a spiritual counselor archangel. And what he does is he helps our loved ones when they're crossing over and one day ourselves to make that transition. So he is there for everyone's transition and he helps them to make that transition. And I believe from my experience that I had with my grandmother, that she had numerous days, if not much longer in preparation before she crossed over. And, um, and I just know that when she did finally cross over that I know Azrael was there to greet her, to help her make that transition. And I really believe also that our loved ones on the other side, when we transition are there with us as well to welcome us into the next realm into heaven and to help us make the transition along with our angels and Azrael and Michael. And I think that is so powerful. So calling upon the angels to help you to help a loved one. I highly recommend it. They need our permission to help us. And you can also ask your loved one. If you have a loved one that's transitioning to help them with their passage, know that it's guaranteed, but you can also ask for their permission to pray for them for the angelic realm to help them make that smooth transition for them so that's what i had to share along the lines of that i also want to add along the lines of house clearing archangel michael in particular is incredibly powerful at clearing energy 
So you can invite him not only to clear your own personal energy or that of a loved one, but also of physical energetic spaces of homes, of offices, buildings, schools, call upon Archangel Michael to do so. And he will, and it's very, very powerful and potent to call on Ar- Archangel Michael for clearing. So, and just before I close my portion at this time, I just want to add that the angelic realm, they're all connected to the divine. They are the light and they are the messengers of God. And they're here to make our lives here on earth even more um, powerful and to help us to have connection with the divine and with their divine angelic messages. So that is my part for the moment. What's our next topic, Geraldine? (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel, for that. So on that uh, note, I'd like to segue into discussing ancestral healing. Um, and as we go now, we've kind of gone through from the very past to ancestors um, to coming into this life to leaving this life. And now we're going to go back to clearing up some of that information that we're holding on to. Stagnant information often stays within our homes when we are expressing that vibrational frequency from our body. So um, as uh, Tammy mentioned earlier, when we have a lot of fights or a lot of angry energy, suppressed energy, frustration, and we are constantly emitting that um, uh, those waves of vibrational frequency into our space, which are very slow, heavy, low waves, which are the closest manifestation to matter. Um, in the universe, we have different manifestations of matter, which are directly related to the vibrational frequency, the movement of the molecular level of each substance. And so the heavier and slower that vibrational rate is, the heavier and more physical it's going to be. The interesting thing about the human body is that we're multidimensional. We have all the ranges of those vibrational frequencies available to us through this incredible um, machine, this incredible instrument of energy and frequency and life force. And so when we're talking about ancestral clearing, first of all, I want to talk about why we keep coming into patterns, cyclical patterns of trauma. Trauma is separation. Uh, Trauma occurs because of separation. So anytime that we are um, experiencing trauma, it's a result of separation. So when we are going through these experiences in our life that are very trying and traumatizing, we are usually going through them in a cyclical manner. We are manifesting and experiencing them cyclically, which means that they have been passed down generationally through our ancestral lineages. We are a result of everything that has happened to our father and our mother lineage. And so we are living out those belief systems, reinforcing them oftentimes with our, with our actions, our thoughts, and the experiences that we are assisting to co-create from that core belief. So when we're talking about this ancestral trauma, a lot of times within our family lineage, within our ancestral lineage, we have incarnated several times in that family lineage through different ways. We may have been a grandmother sometime to our mother, a father, a partner, our different members in our family we have been interacting with for very, very long time. And beyond that, interacting with everyone that we interconnect with in the world, because again, we are one organism of consciousness. And what we're experiencing here is a fractal, um, a fragmentation of that one source within different embodiments of one another. So when we're working with ancestral clearing, we want to look at what are the patterns, the main patterns that we are living in our life of low frequency, which means what's the emotion, the repetitive negative emotion that comes to surface in your life primarily. This is the gateway to understand how to begin to not only heal the ancestral lineage that you're a part of, but to begin to transmute and move Uh, alchemically, energetically, uh, stagnant energy from your body, and also what you're expressing and trapping into your environment. And more importantly, what we are carrying out into our children, because your children are a direct result of your programming, and so on and so forth. Now, because we are an entire multiverse that is constantly evolving, we are constantly moving through evolution as a natural aspect of of vibration and natural laws of creation, we are always ascending one level to another. 
So in every life that you come into, there is an opportunity to clear that ancestor lineage. Now, what happens to a lot of souls when they come into the physical plane, into the three-dimensional plane of earth, we come into hypnosis. We forget as children, we are wide awake. We have all our senses open. Um, and little by little with programming, they begin to disconnect. Not only is our DNA becoming uh, crystallized, which means that we are not activating the majority part of our DNA, which activates our extrasensory abilities, which activates our intuitive abilities and all the other um, chakra centers, vortices that interact with other dimensional planes, the non-physical. And so we go into these states of feeling that this physical environment is all there is. And we become trapped in that belief system until something happens to jolt us up and wake us up. And we experience those trans those um, wake up situations individually and collectively. So we have that recorded not only in our DNA, but we have it recorded in our ancestral lineage. So all that's needed is to begin to clear up some of those repetitive patterns and emotions. When we're talking about mediumship and connecting with the other side and the beings that come in to communicate with us, oftentimes the ones that come in, I want you to notice your state of it, your emotional state that you're in at that moment when you're connecting with the being and notice what are some of the repetitive events that have happened leading up to that communication because it will speak a lot to what is needed to be addressed in that moment. When I work with clients a lot of times in our healing sessions, um, the grandparent would come in exactly at the time when they're beginning to look at a very heavy ancestral program that needs to be healed in the family, whether that's abuse in the family, whether it's alcoholism, any kind of self-destructive patterns that either we're beginning to play out in our life or we've been already playing out in our life. And the wonderful thing that I see within the hierarchy of consciousness and within the levels of manifestation of life is that every, every um, new generation that comes in has an opportunity to clean it, almost has a responsibility to clean it, clean it because you are all of your ancestors. They are fragments of yourself. So when you're clearing up that energy, once you transmute that heavy program that you've had, cutting energetic cords to release this uh, feeding and exchanging of that of information is very important. So I'll just quickly uh, share this uh, clearing with you. If you work with your ancestors, if you tap into some of your ancestors, go ahead and see them in a crowd. As soon as you identify the repetitive pattern that you're working with, look at the emotion, follow the emotional trail historically through your life to the most root point that you began to experience that experience. So it could be somewhere in the crib. It could even be in the womb. And usually we are absorbing the emotions of our parents, which are a direct result of their programming. So usually that's what's going down generationally. So if you target that moment and just connect with yourself, what is it that you needed in order to not feel that way? Look at what you needed and observe what they needed. More than likely, you will need the exact same things. And you will notice that you're mirroring, even at that small age, that program to one another. So as you begin to remove that, you will begin to see ancestors that come forth that lineage and what we have is energetic cords that connect us to parts on this earth, the grid of the earth. So for example, in my family, let's say a Bolivian Italian um, background. So for me, my parents' cords come to Bolivia, literally have cords with information that connect to the country of Bolivia and connect to the country of Italy. And within that are all the roots that go into my ancestors. We are incarnating and allocated, depending on our vibrational frequency, in such incredible uh, infinite fractals that we are put into societies that match our vibrational frequency. So if you're incarnating in America, you have a certain set of programs that you're here to heal. If you're incarnating in South America, you have a certain set of programs. 
And those programs in Africa and Europe, all the different parts, continents of the planet have different energies. They have different, it really has to do with the energy centers and vibrational frequencies, the chakras and grid lines of the earth, just like the physical body, are meant to work on certain lineages of information. So we need to clear that up. And those of you that are light workers probably already know some of this, but you can work on some of that, clearing that up. And in Bolivia, for example, there's a lot of heavy energy. So when we begin to clear that up, you're clearing up its, it's root chakra uh, stuff. And it, it, you're clearing up stuff, not just for yourself, but your family and the majority of the people in that place. So there's a lot of opportunity for healing. So cutting cords, taking back your life force energy and releasing what no longer belongs to you is incredibly important to neutralize that. And this is, can also be done in your home and the land that you live on because we have agreements with the land that we live on. That is also an energetic point that we are a vibrational match to when we come into a house and it has to do with our programs and belief systems that we're not processing. So um, that's pretty much what I want to talk about. And I want to end today's um, event just talking really briefly about the white light. We want to clear up as much of this ancestral blockage, as much of this stagnant information as possible, so that when we go into death, into that tunnel of white light, that we become fractalized, means that we're transmuting. And there's a lot of information about this, but in other words, we're becoming the holy grail as above, so below. Our vibrational match, uh, vibrational energy is a match to the next dimensional plane, which means that you have to raise your vibrational frequency in order to gently traverse through that white light, to go into that match, to match that white light. If you're not at that vibrational frequency, you get trapped, trapped within the physical plane, in between dimensions in between planes and your belief systems and everything your expression is a match to the physical so of course you will be there either attached to a home and that confusion that occurs is because you have not taken the time to get to know yourself throughout your life you haven't become acquainted with the alchemy of the physical body and it's in Incredibly important to do so. This is something that has been incredibly revered from the Buddhists to the Egyptians, Mesopotamia, going all the way back to South America. All the different continents on this planet have rituals and practices around death and how important it is to navigate those planes and prepare for that time of detachment in which you want to be in a state of bliss. And um, uh, that bliss creates an alchemical and chemical transmutation from the physical into a higher non-physical state. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty much all I want to share about that. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody else have any other comments they want to add to anything or anything we missed from our list of topics today? I would, I would just like to say um, when my late husband, James, Three days before he passed away, we had a lot of ceremony in his hospital room. And then when he actually passed, it was, it really was the feeling of a birth on the other side. It and it did, you know, that during a birth, uh, you, you, you naturally feel the angels. I don't know if any of you have had that experience where, I mean, it just feels so heavenly in that birth room. Well, the same thing happened um, with my late husband, James, where it did really feel like he was being birthed on the other side and we, and it was like the heavens were open. And so I, and I had, of course, that's the opposite of what I was so terrified of experiencing in those moments, you know, where I felt like I mean, I didn't know how I was going to be in that moment because, you know, his death was imminent and we knew it. And, but I had never had the idea that, uh, you know, that I would feel this feeling of heaven, you know? And so, you know, if we do the work that Geraldine's talking about and that all of us are talking about, 
you know, that when you pass, you can really just let go. And uh, the people around you will feel this door opening to heaven. So I just wanted to mention that. Thanks, Geraldine. That's amazing. Exactly. And many people that have these near death experiences talk about that exact thing, yeah. which is is mind blowing. If you um, one of the first books I read at the age of eight was many, um, many lives, many masters. Right. Uh, the stories of are just incredible, you know, and, and the similarities in the process of dying really speaks to some kind of structure to our process of death that we can kind of lean on in understanding what is there. If everyone keeps seeing it. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful. So what I'd like to do is open the floor for some questions really quickly before we leave. Um, let me just really scan this quickly to see if anybody had any questions. Um, we have a question from what's question, 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 question. Um, Anja says, I work with vortex, vortexing the energies, how you feel about creating a vortex. Very good. So, uh, and I think Anja works with vort vortices in her home as well, or, or clearing homes with vortex energy. So uh, the vortex is movement of that life force and in, re in reality um, we are made up of vortices of energy either contracting or expanding and so the way that we move energy through dimensional planes is through vortices also known as wormholes that begin to open up from one dimension to another and we experience this by, by location or we experience this uh, quantum non-locality where we go from one place to another and that occurs through that kind of uh, uh, space-time measurement. So how we are working with vortices are incredibly important. We are made up of a collection of vortices. Our entire construct of our physicality is made up of that. So that's how energy moves through the body and how it moves through our space. So using vortices in the home is incredibly important when clearing because we need to direct that energy somewhere. Energy does not disappear. So we need to direct that. It's a reallocation of life force energy. And we also use vortices for removing entities from the body. Because what are ghosts? What are entities? What are disembodied souls? What are these attachments? They're consciousness that is either is traumatized. It doesn't know what to do next. It is stuck within that space. It doesn't have the information or the awareness of its own consciousness enough to trust the direction that it needs to naturally flow in. So it becomes stagnant energy. And so that happens in the body and it happens outside. And what we're doing is we're removing that attachment. And instead of it living off our life force or the life force of a home, it goes into the infinite source, mm -hmm. the infinite source of all things, which is that white light that we bring down as a vortex. And we introduce these entities into that white light and they, they, are, um, they are now introduced to the all, which feels incredibly unconditionally loving, welcoming all, all these uh, human emotions. But in, in reality, it is the all, it is the unity that it has been longing for, that we are all here to experience. So we want to direct all of those trapped energies into that vortex in order to transmute the life force of a space or body. So definitely use uh, vortex, Anja, very good. So Lily asked Geraldine, um about moving, moving from one area to another at a very young age. She was born in South America, moved when she was only six years old to North America. I'm really curious to hear what you're gonna say about this. I really feel like she was, she, she started in South America. I feel like there was a familiarity there that made it a very comforting place for you to start this life in, but there was definitely work for you to be done and a contract with the land in North America. That's just kind of, the vision that I had when I saw that question, but I'm curious just overall, when we move at a young age like that, Geraldine, what do you have to, what do you have to say? About yeah, that? absolutely. So as energetic beings, as I mentioned, it actually has to do with our, our last topic about, you know, re relocating, reallocating life force energy. Every time that we have an opportunity to experience this dimensional plane, 
we are allocated by the vibrational frequency that we had in the last expression. Now, mind you, we are not a linear timeline and we are not just one expression. We are infinite expressions and we are one fragment of that infinite that's experiencing this moment right now, this lifetime. So as this fragment, you are a match to the lessons and all of the energy that is necessary in the place of birth. Now, when we look at astrology, whether it's Eastern or Western astrology, there's a lot of importance in the time of your birth and the place of your birth because it creates a vibrational energy, an energetic state. It's a picture. You are a picture of the universe at that exact time. And your location talks, speaks to not just your energetic make, but every single part of your body, the health of your body, the thoughts, the emotions that you're used to are an imprint of that information. It plays into the blueprint of the work that you're here to do. So it's incredibly important where you're born. And it means that the family that you came into is precisely the exact family that's needed for you to open up your gifts in that specific way. So a lot of incredibly powerful healers are usually the ones that have incredibly traumatic pasts. They have gone through wars. They have gone through trauma, uh, abuse in the family. And it's incredibly necessary for an organism, an alchemist. Um, and usually they're very old souls that have worked with alchemy and energy for many lifetimes to learn that process of transmutation, to go from that place of pain and suffering into a place of expansion and unconditional love and healing. This is the expression of the true healer. And we see this, you don't need to be a crazy, incredible healer in order to know that law. It's just the process of healing. Some people don't get to that point. They don't experience that opening, that expression. They maintain in that suffering pain program all their lives. And it Sometimes that can be an agreement to experience as well, but it will dictate their next lifetime because they will be a match that same program in order to transmute that. So there is so many different parts that play a role in this, but the kind of where we are born decides, dictates your work here in the planet Earth and because your specific knowledge, your specific history has to do with the healing that you can provide your ancestral lineage and basically to the entire continent of South America because they are all running a specific similar program. And so your soul came in for that healing. We come into families to heal them. Um, that's an opportunity that's available through your free will choice. Um, but yeah, so it's really, really important. Um, and, and I think I'll stop there, although we can get into that. We should have a whole event on that topic, actually. Great, great question. Um, Lily says here, and did I miss anything here? Let's see. That's so beautiful because I'm in school to become a psychotherapist here in the U.S., but I was born in Venezuela. I want to use my empaths' gifts and sensitivity to work with uh, indigo adults as well as empaths, specifically known at HSV. Highly sensitive person. Thank you so much. Absolutely agreed. And, and so just to mention, when you go into another land, oftentimes the frequency of that next land um, provides um, a bit of a alleviation, a separation from that main root program that allows you to come into higher development, right? Um, and Lily says, I have a very traumatic childhood and a very narcissistic, cruel mother. Yeah. So... And, and that's funny because one of the biggest programs in South America is the Divine Mother, the inversion of the Divine Feminine. That's a big one for South America. Um, the suppression of the Divine Feminine is a big one. So we're here to heal that. Um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, I think that's it here. What else? Am I missing anything, guys? Do you see anything else I'm missing here? <laughs> no, I think we addressed all the questions that I saw. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here today. And uh, let me put us here. So we thank all... you so much, everybody, for such the great, all the great interaction and all of your wonderful sharing. That was wonderful. Yes, yeah. we're grateful for all of you. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. We've had great, great, obviously a whole event and great discussion in the chat. So thank you all so much. We know it's no accident that we're all here today, right here, right now, and later <laughs> on the replay. So mm -hmm. blessings to all. 
Yes. Thank you. <laughs> our, our next event is going to be uh, June 2nd uh, at 7.30 p.m. Please do check us out. And I can't wait to connect with you with another interesting topic that we're going to dive into and uh, talk about from every possible angle as we did here today. Thank you so much, beautiful ladies, for your incredible wisdom and gifts. And I have created a new page on our Higher Healing website that you can check out called Post Show. Um, it's uh, basically every tool that you need, all the services that we discussed today or support that you need to handle uh, entities in a home, home clearings, you can get virtual home clearings, um, energetic work. Please reach out to any of us. You'll find our information on that page and I will put it in the chat right now for you to connect with that. So reach out to any of us. Thank you so much. All my love and have a great week. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. <laughs>